Today we're going over mining is how to do simplifying. If we can do this lesson, the next multiplication and division are really, really easy because they're literally doing the exact same thing. If you can't do this lesson, the next two lessons are impossible because it's doing the exact same thing. Okay? So that's why we're practicing this. So we need to discuss with ourselves if it's a monomial or a binomial right off the bat. Okay? So monomials have no plus or minus signs. They are one term, no plus or minus signs. Binomial is two terms with a plus or minus sign in between it. Correct? So number one, what are both of these? Monomials. And when you see a monomial, the very first thing you're going to do is bracket everything separately. Okay? Monomial means one term. It's a fancy way of saying one term. So I'm going to put brackets around this, brackets around this, brackets around this, because they're monomials. Nothing, no plus or minus signs attaching the different letters and stuff like that. When you have monomials, your NPVs are the easiest things ever. Because whatever variable you have in the denominator just can't equal zero. Because if A equals zero, it would cancel the other two off. If B equals zero, it would cancel off the 26 and the A squared, right? So when you have monomials, you literally can, for your non-permissible values, just say A and B can't equal zero. And done and done. So monomials should be your easiest questions to do. They are often done the worst. Until I say, oh, you just cancel these off. And you're like, oh, really? Man. Because you're trying to take out GCF. You're trying to look for differences of squares. You're trying to do all that. No. Monomials are not done like that. Brackets around every single thing and then cancel off stuff. Okay? So when I walked around, the monomial was stumping people way more than any of the other ones. Does that shock me? No. Because that's how it always works. Okay? But I want you guys to get past that. So if we look here, we say 32 and 26 are our numbers. Correct? What can we take out of 32 and 26? Because our first step for monomials is brackets. Second step is just cancelling. That's it. There's two steps in monomials. So what can I cancel out of 32 and 26? A 2. 32 divided by 2 is negative 16. 26 divided by 2? 13. On the top, I have a cubed, which is a times a times a. Correct? On the bottom, I have a squared, which is a times a. Right? So it's always one A for another one's monomial. So I can take off two of these A's and then two of these. So I'm just left with A to the 1. And where is it still sitting? In the numerator. So that's where it's going to stay. Correct? Then this one, the numerator has two B's, so a B and a B. And then the bottom has B times B times B because it's B cubed. So I can take off two of these B's for two of these B's, and I'm left with a 1. I don't know why this is not acknowledging it as flat, but that's okay. So there's one. It's a B. It's sitting in the denominator. So where is it going to stay? The denominator. The monomial question should be your easiest questions to do. So you literally bracket them, then cancel. That's it. So we write what's left over. Negative 16, A. And then these slanted lines are just ones, right? So when you multiply by ones, does it change anything? No. And then on the bottom, we're left with 13B. And then we just have A, B cannot equal 0. Monomials should be the easiest. So this is version 2.0. Try this one out. Negative 16x squared y cubed over 12xy squared. We have to remember that the top is a what? The numerator is a what? Monomial. The denominator is a what? Monomial. So what do we have to say about them? They're both monomials, so the very first thing I just do is put them in brackets. Anytime I get a monomial, I put it in brackets. So I'm going to get negative 16x squared y, 12xy squared. And whenever our denominator is a monomial, we can just say x comma y can't equal zero. Whatever your variables that are sitting in the denominator, they just can't equal zero when it's monomials. They're the easiest. Okay, then I say to myself, self, what can I take out of negative 16 and 12? Four. So when I divide negative 16 by 4, I get negative 4. 12 divided by 4, I get 3. x and x squared, what can I take out of both of them? an x. And then I can take one x out of this one and I'm left with a 1. y squared, I can take out two of them and I'm left with one y. 
And where they sit is where they stay. So if I have an X and a Y sitting in my numerator, that's where they were left. That's where I keep them, correct? Because some people are like, I don't know. I just always move them to the numerator. You can't just move them. If they're left over in the denominator, they stay in the denominator. If they're left over in the numerator, they stay in the numerator. So it's wherever they still exist. So wherever the variable's larger is where it's going to be, right? So then we just write what's left over. So we get negative 4 times 1 times x times y. So I get negative 4xy all over 3 times 1 times 1 times 1. So just a 3. And then remember to follow behind with xy can't equal 0. And that's your answer. So monomials should be easy, okay? They're often found hard because you guys are so used to doing GCFs right away or difference of squares, but you get stuck. You're like, I don't know what to do. Brackets. Do brackets right away, okay? They should be the easy questions. Okay, number two. The numerator is a monomial or a binomial? Is the numerator on number two a binomial or a monomial? It's a binomial. So if it's a binomial, which means two terms, I'm going to put both of them in brackets. Is the bottom a binomial or a monomial, the denominator? Monomial. monomial. So I go and just put everything itself in brackets, right? So when I have a monomial, I just put it right in brackets. So if I have a monomial my, on the denominator, my NPVs are easy, correct? They're just whatever the variable is that's sitting down there, can't equal zero. So what are my variables? Just x, right? So I'm going to say x can't equal zero. To help myself out. Okay, if it is a monomial, I can go right to brackets, meaning one term. If it is a binomial, I'm going to say, is it a GCF or a difference of squares? That's what I always look for if it's a binomial. GCF first, difference of squares second. Is there anything I can take out, a greatest common factor, that I can take out a negative 15x squared minus 10x? I can take out a negative 5. So I run equal signs down because even if I take a negative 5 out, it's still the exact same thing, just in a simpler way. So I take a negative 5. Can I take anything else out? X. An x. Okay, then in these brackets, I'm going to have the binomial still. What's left after I take out the negative 5x? Okay? So I go to negative 15x squared and I take out a negative 5x, I am dividing. So negative 15 divided by negative 5 is 3. And x squared take out an x, I'm left with an x. Then negative 10x divided by negative 5x. So what's negative 10 divided by negative 5? Positive 2. x divided by x, cancel. Correct? So remember, we should always be able to check GCFs by putting them back in and getting what I have. So if I pretend to put this back in, negative 5x times 3x, I get negative 15x squared. Negative 5x plus times 2 is negative 10x. I got it back, so I know I did my GCF correctly, right? And then on the bottom, well, this is a monomial still, so I can put the negative 5 and the x in their own brackets. If my GCF is a monomial, I can put things in its own brackets. In the bottom, I have 15 and x squared. Now, keep in mind, monomials can only cross off monomials, and binomials can only cross off binomials. I have one binomial. It is 3x plus 2. Do I have another 3x plus 2 in the denominator? No. So I know before even doing anything else that my answer is going to have a 3x plus 2 in the numerator because it's the only binomial in this question, and only binomials can cross off binomials. Okay? Now I have a few monomials. I have negative 5 and 15. Can I cancel anything out of those? I can take out a negative 5, right? Or I can take out a 5, whatever. If I take out a 5, I'm left with negative 1. 15 divided by 5, I'm left with 3. What about the x and the x squared? That's 1x one. One x with 1x because they're monomials, correct? So what's left in the numerator? Negative 1 and then 3x plus 2. What's left in the denominator? 3x. And then I follow behind with x can't equal 0. Now I look at 3. 3 is a binomial over a binomial. Can you agree? So they go straight into brackets. 
is binomials have brackets around them showing that that's two terms connected together, right? When I have a binomial, the first thing I do is, can I take out a GCF or is it a difference of squares? So I look at the top. I have 4x squared minus 8x. Is there anything I can GCF out of that? Any greatest common factor? What? A 4 and an x, yep. Yeah? All right, an equal sign. Make sure you guys have equal signs running down the left-hand side. Always check on your page, be sure. I can take out a 4x, and then what am I left with? I'm still going to be left with a binomial. It's just going to be simpler, but it still needs to be a binomial, because when I take out a greatest common factor of a binomial, I'm still left with a binomial. So 4x squared divided by 4x is what? Just an x. Minus 8x divided by 4x is just minus... Two. Now, is the 4x a monomial or a binomial? Is your GCF a monomial? Always. Your GCF is always a monomial. So I've got 4 and x sitting in the front. I can put them in their own bracket because they're a monomial. Your GCF will always be a monomial. Then I have 10 minus 5x. What can I take out of those two? I can take out a 5. So I take out the 5, and then I'm left with 10 divided by 5 is 2. Negative 5x uh, divided by 5 is negative x. And then people want to cancel these off. First off, I have to state non-permissible values. I can't cancel them off until I state non-permissible values, right? NPV is always first. Does this 5 get me anything? Any problems? No. But I can go 2 minus x can't equal 0. Add my x over. And I have 2 can't equal x. So there's my non-permissible value. So that's a 0. That's not what I meant to write. 2 to not equal x. So that's my non-permissible value. Now some people tell me those brackets match, those binomials match. The order doesn't matter. The sign in front of it matters. Okay? So they can be out of order. That doesn't matter. I can go x minus 2 and then um, negative 2 plus x and they've got out of order but they're actually the same. Order doesn't matter in those brackets. What matters is the sign in front of the term is the same. So let's look. This one here is a positive x. This one here is a negative. negative x. This here is a negative 2. This here is a positive 2. So they're the exact same but wrong signs, right? How can I change signs? Instead of taking out a 4x, could I have taken out a negative 4x and it would change the signs? Yeah. So you can take out that negative 4x. If I had taken out a negative 4x instead of a positive 4x, let's see. So if I take out <clears throat> So I'm going to take out a negative 4x instead. So negative 4x squared divided by 4x squared sorry divided by negative 4x is negative 1. X. And then I have negative 8x divided by negative 4x is plus 2. Now do they match? I have a plus 2 and a plus 2, a negative x and a negative x. So now do they match? Yes. So if they are the same but wrong signs, you should have taken a negative out of one of them instead. So go back and take a negative out. Okay? Then these cancel off because they're the same. Nothing can come out of 4 and 5, and there's just an x by itself. So my result would be negative 4x over 5, and then x can't equal 2. Do you recognize it? Can't you just cancel and then multiply the top by the You cannot just cancel because you have to show that they're actually the same. So if on a test I see this, or someone who's marking it sees this, so like negative, so, so you had 4x. Ah. So say you had 4x and then x minus 2 and then you had um, 5 and then you had 2 minus x and you went like this. Do those match? No. No. So you actually have to show that taking the negative 4x out makes this be a negative x and this be a positive 2 and then you can cancel them. So you have to change the signs in that bracket. Your answer will end up being the same. But any person who knows math will take you off at least 0.5 because what you did is actually not true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, I got 4x over negative 5. Is that still the same thing? Yep. You just took a negative out of the bottom. Yep. 
absolutely the same. So this could be written like this. It could be written like this. <coughs> or it could be written like this. Because the negative can move, right? And what I'm saying to you, too, about that whole, like, canceling them off and not changing the sign. Um, some people might not catch it because you look and you see the answer right, you check it. But if someone back checks you, you'll lose last year, which last, we don't want to do. Last year, we would just put, like, the negative in front of the answer. Like, we wouldn't put it top and bottom. Yeah, you can put it here. You can put it in front. You can put it on the bottom. All three of these answers are correct. Oh, see. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So you putting the negative out in front of the whole thing? Totally correct. Um, you just need to know that the negative can move. So if they give a multiple choice answer, they could give the top one, they could give the bottom one, they could give the middle one. We know they're all the same. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You can totally do that. You can put the negative completely in front. Uh, the only catch is, is if you have put the negative in front and the initial is like a negative four, those will become positive. Yeah. Right? So if you left it negative, negative, they could probably, be, could probably get away with it. But multiple choice it won't match because it'll be positive. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay, number four, binomial, binomial. So on the top I can take out a four and an x, and then I'm left with x squared minus nine. In the bottom, I can take out a two and an x squared, and then I'm left with three minus x. Now the four and the x are monomials, and the two and the x squared are monomials. Now, if you sit here and you're like, wow, there's this weird like x squared minus 9, 3 minus x. I don't think that's completely um, canceled it off as much as I possibly can. Most people miss a difference of squares. Okay? That top, x squared minus 9, is a difference of squares. So we actually have to factor it. So we're left with 4, x, x squared minus 9. I take the square root of x squared, I get x. Square root of 9, I get 3. And I have to have a different sign. If it's a plus sign, if it's x squared plus 9, it just stays. There's nothing you can do to it. x squared minus 9 turns to x plus 3, x minus 3. And then I have a 2 and an x squared and a 3 minus x. If you want to, rearrange it. Write it as negative x plus 3 because that's what it actually is. Do these match now? x minus 3 and negative x plus 3. Do they match? No, they're the same but wrong side, correct? So I could just put a negative in front of the 2. And then this turns to a positive and this turns to a negative. And now they actually match, right? It changes the signs in there. So the catch is, is that we can't cancel off until we do our MPBs. Does negative 2 give me an MPB? Negative 2 by itself, is that a variable? No. X squared, what does that mean? X can't equal zero. zero. And then I have X minus three can't equal zero. So X can't equal three. So those are my two MPBs. Now these can cancel off. This X can cross off one of these X's because it's a monomial. And the four and the negative two, I can take a two out. So four divided by two is two. Negative two divided by two is negative one. And so I'm left with two X plus three over negative x. Now could I write that as negative 2 x plus 3 over positive x? Are those the same thing? Can I move that negative up or put it completely in front? Okay. They're all the same. Which one's better? The one that matches the multiple choice. That's the one that's better. That's it. Other than that, any of them are acceptable. x can't equal 0 or 3. So now when I look at A, I have two numerators and two denominators, correct? That's it. It's the only difference between A and the previous question, so we'll just do it. We still treat every numerator and every denominator the exact same we did the last questions. So I look and I say, if it's a monomial, I put it in its own separate brackets. If it's a binomial, I bracket around the whole thing, okay? X plus 1, what's that? Monomial or binomial? binomial? Binomial, so it gets its own brackets. X plus 3, monomial or binomial? binomial? Binomial, so it gets its own brackets. 2X plus 6, binomial. binomial. X squared plus X, binomial. 
So we all agree that far, correct? Those are all binomials. They go in their own breath. Okay? Then my rule with binomials is, after I put them in their own brackets, I look at them and I say, is there a greatest common factor I can take out? Or is there a difference of squares? Every single time. Same thing. It's not like it changes. Okay? So I look at x plus 1. And I, first off, I'm going to write an equal sign, sorry. When I look at x plus 1, the numerator on the left, is there anything I can take out of it? No. Is it a difference of squares? Is it an x squared minus something? No. So, it goes in its own bracket. Done. There's absolutely nothing I can do to it. Just leave it in its own bracket. No GCF, no difference of squares. So I look at the bottom left denominator, x plus 3. Is there anything I can take out of that? Any GCFs? Is it a difference of squares? It's not even a different sign, so for sure it can't be a difference of squares. So, good. Done. x plus 3. Multiplication dot. Right-hand side, 2x plus 6. Can I do anything to that? Any GCS? Yeah, what can I take out? A 2. So I write the 2 outside, and inside the brackets, I still need to have a binomial. If I GCF something out of a binomial, in the brackets, it's still a binomial. Okay? So now let's check it out. 2x divided by a 2 is x plus 6 divided by 2 plus 3. And the 2 can go in its own brackets. Okay? Bottom right denominator, x squared plus x. What can I take out of that? An x. So I write that. And then I put brackets that are going to contain a binomial. Because if I GCF out of a binomial, I'm still left with a binomial. Two terms. Okay. x squared take out an x. I'm left with x. What's x divided by x, not 0? What is x divided by x? 1. I need a plus 1. So those of you who put just x, would I get a binomial back when I distributed it? No. So please remember that when you GCF, or greatest common factor, out of a binomial, you still have a binomial. Okay? So now it's as low as it can go everywhere. We agree? Because it's multiplication, watch this. It's going to be crazy. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. Because it's a binomial, sorry, not a binomial, because it's a multiplication statement, You, when you multiply fractions, you multiply top times top, bottom times bottom, right? That's how we multiply fractions. So we can do this. It makes a full numerator over a full denominator. That's it. So now we have just a simplifying thing that we just were just doing, right? Exact same thing. Am I allowed to cancel even though things start matching and it makes me really happy and I want to cancel? Can I cancel right now? No. What do I have to first do? Nope. Starts with an N. NPVs. NPVs. Every single time. Always before I cancel. So if I go to cancel because I'm like, oh, X plus 1, X plus 1, sweet. I slap my hand and I'm like, no. Stop. <laughs> NPVs. Bless you. So I only need it for the denominator. It happens to be two denominators now, which I may be one denominator but still only the denominators. So I get non-permissible values. Okay, so I have x plus 3 can't equal 0, x can't equal 0, and x plus 1 can't equal 0. It's when I subtract the 3 over, so I'm going to get x can't equal negative 3. This one is done. This one I'm going to subtract the 1 over, so I get x can't equal negative 1. So I actually have three non-permissible values, right? Now, if I have monomials, I can cancel monomials off with monomials and binomials off with binomials. Binomials have to match exactly the same. You have to have a twin on the top and a twin on the bottom, a twin in the numerator and a twin in the denominator. Do I have any twins in the numerators and denominators? Anything perfectly matched? It's not a trick question. Yeah, what matches? X plus 1 and X plus 1, X plus 3 and X plus 3. Now I have two monomials left. I have a 2 and an X. Can I take anything out of those? No, that's it. 2 over X. X can't equal negative 3, negative 1, and 0. We're going to look at B. 
So I'm going to do every single numerator and denominator separately, correct? So I look at the left-hand side up, to, up top, so in the numerator. I have 12x cubed. Is that a monomial or a binomial? Monomial. When it's a monomial, I just go and put brackets around everything. Cool, that one's done. The denominator on the left, so the bottom on the left, is a what? Monomial or binomial? Binomial. So when it's a binomial, I have to put it in brackets. And we'll DCF or difference of squares it in the next step. Okay, right hand side, numerator, top. 4x cubed plus 8x squared. Monomial or binomial? Binomial, so it goes into its own brackets. Right hand side denominator, bottom. Is it a monomial or a binomial? Monomial, because it's just the number 5. Okay, then I get an equal sign. Now the monomials just stay in their own brackets, so I get a 12 and an x cubed. The binomials, I have to see, can I take out a greatest common factor? Or is there a difference of squares left over? So I have 3x squared plus 6x. Can I take out a greatest common factor? Yes. What can I take out? Is he? A 3 and a? This one, just this one. 3 and a? So, if I have 3x squared divided by 3x, what am I left with? 3 divided by 3 cancels. x squared take out an x and left with a x. Then I have a plus sign. Remember, I'm going to still have a binomial in this bracket. 6x divided by 3x is just 2. Then I have a multiplication done. The top of the binomial again. What can I take out of 4x cubed plus 8x squared? 4x squared. Now, 4x squared divided, or sorry, 4x cubed divided by 4x squared is just x. Plus 8x squared divided by 4x squared is a plus 2. And then I have the 5 on the bottom. Now, the GCFs are monomials, right? Like this 3x is a monomial. We agree? So I can put it in its own bracket. And this GCF 4x squared is a monomial. So I can put it in its own bracket. And then I can do this. Because when you multiply fractions, whole numerator or full denominator. Before I cancel off stuff that matches, what must I do? MPVs. <coughs> Five by non permissible value. Okay, does the three get me a non permissible value? It's the number three. Zero. No. Yeah, x gets me a zero. X can't equal zero. Then we have x plus two can't equal zero. So x can't equal negative two. And then what about this 5? Does it cause me any problems? No, it's a 5. 5 can't be 0 because it's a 5. Right? Now I look at the binomials and the monomials. Monomials can only cancel off monomials, and binomials can only cancel off binomials, and binomials cancel have to be twins. Correct? So a binomial, I only have one binomial, it's x plus 2. Do I have one in, in the top and one in the bottom? Yeah. So they can cancel off. Are there any monomials that can cancel? I have an x cubed in the top, an x squared in the top, an x in the bottom. Can I take one x out of somewhere? No. Yeah, because I have one x in the bottom, and I have technically five x's on the top, don't I? x cubed and x squared makes five x's, and on the bottom I have one x. So I can take one x out of the five x's, right? Not one x out of each of the x's. So this one x can either come out of the x cubed or the x squared, but not out of both. Because I need to still be left with 4x's, correct? If I take an x out of both, I'm only left with 3. Did that make sense? No. So I've taken out of one or the other, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to take it out of the x cubed, so I'm going to be left with an x squared. I can't take it out of both, because I still need to be left with 4x's, because I only got rid of 1. Okay? 
And then I look at my numbers in front. I have a 12, I have a 4, I have a 3, I have a 5. Is there anything I can take out of any of them? Four. Three. A 3. I can take a 3 out. 4 I can't take out of 3 or 5. 5 I can't take out of 12 and 4. But I can take a 3 out of both of these. Now, say you missed that. I'm going to pretend I missed that I could take a 3 out. I'm going to totally missed it. Okay? Cool. I'm going to pretend I missed it. So I can go 12 and 4 is 48, because I'm multiplying. x squared and x squared is x to the 4, because I have 4 of them. And then on the bottom I get 3 times 5, which is 15. So say I missed that I could take a 3 out up there. Who cares? I can do it in this step now. I can just have an extra step. I can take a 3 out of 48 and a 3 out of 15, right? So if you don't get it in that other step, who cares? Put them together and then reduce them. Now you could also type it into your calculator. Go 48 divided by 15. And let's go. 48 divided by 15. Then go math, enter, enter. So go 48 divided by 15 in your calculator. Then math, enter, enter. And it reduces you to 16 over 5, right? It will reduce it for you. So either you can see, hey, I can take a 3 out of this, so I'm left with 16, and a 3 out of this, so I'm left with 5. Or you could go 48 divided by 15, math enter, enter, it reduces it to 16 over 5, right? So our answer is 16, if you're stuck, you can do that. It's like a last ditch effort. 16x to the 4 over 5. And then you can follow behind with x can't equal 0 or negative 2. Okay, I want you to try C. Hint, there's a difference of squares in there somewhere. So, the top left-hand side, so the numerator on the left-hand side, is that a binomial or a monomial? Binomial. Binomial. So it gets brackets all the way around it, and our next step is going to be to try to GCF for difference of squares, right? So if we can follow these same steps over and over and over, it's not completely overwhelming, because this unit can be overwhelming for people. Okay? Now, the bottom left-hand side, the denominator on the left-hand side, is that a monomial or a binomial? Binomial. So we put brackets around both terms, and our next step is going to be to GCF or difference of squares. <coughs> okay, the right-hand numerator, the top of the right-hand side, is that a monomial or a binomial? <coughs> monomial, so it gets some bracket and it's going to be done, right? No GCF, so different squares, nothing like that. The bottom right-hand side, the denominator on the right-hand side, is that a monomial, one term, or a binomial, two? Binomial. So it's going to get brackets around it, and then we're going to try and GCF or difference of squares it, right? That's what we always do. So we, we're working our way through trying to figure out what everything is. So the first step is to literally bracket properly. Then the next step is, if it's a binomial, I look for GCFs or difference of squares. So let's look at the top. So the numerator on the left-hand side. So I say, okay, it's a binomial. It has 2x cubed minus 4x squared. So I can take out a 2 out of the 2 and the 4. Cool. And I can take an x squared out of both because I can only take the smaller x out. So I can take an x squared out. And then what am I left with? That's the question. So that's where I get my still a binomial. When I GCF out of a binomial, in the brackets, I'm still left with a binomial, right? I'm just simplifying that binomial. I'm not changing it to a monomial. I can't. If it's a binomial, it stays a binomial for life. You can't, like, make it not be. Okay. So I have 2x cubed, and I take out a 2x squared. I'm just left with an x, right? Negative 4x squared divided by 2x squared is just minus 2. And this 2 and this x squared, the GCF is a monomial. That's what GCFs are. So this turns into just its own brackets. Okay. The denominator on the left-hand side the bottom on the left, 3x squared minus 9x. What can I GCF out? What can be the greatest common factor? 3 and an x. So 3x squared divided by 3x is x. Negative 9x divided by 3x is minus 3. And then the 3 and the x go in their own brackets. Multiplied by, on this side, I have a monomial, so it just stays x squared. The denominator is a what? Binomial, but it is a special binomial. It is a difference of squares. 
Okay, how do I know that? X squared is squared, 4 is a perfect square, and there's a different sign in between them, right? So the square root of x squared is x. It can't be a decimal. If it turns out to be a decimal, it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect square, therefore it's not a difference of squares. Square root of 4 is 2. So then at the front of each bracket, I'm going to get an x because that's what came first. The back of each bracket, I'm going to get a 2 because that's what came second, plus, minus. We agree? This is the hardest part, by all means. If you can get past this part, most people can come pretty darn close to having the correct answer. The problem is, is that people can't often get from the first step to the second. They just bracket the crap out of everything. And then they just cancel random things that cannot be canceled. Okay? So you have to spot binomials. Bracket them first. G, C, F. Spot binomials. G, C, F. Monomials in their own brackets. That's what we have to do. Trust me. Okay? Now, it is a multiplication. So I can just do this. Remember, full numerator over full denominator. Because their numerators multiply numerators. Denominators multiply denominators. Before I move on, I have to do non-permissible values. If you use short form in your notes, fine, they're your notes. But on a test, don't short form. Okay? All right. So I have a 3. Does a 3 create me a non-permissible value? It's a 3. Can it ever be a 0? It's a 3. No. What about an x by itself? That's just going to be x f equals 0 boxes. Okay, then I have an x minus 3. x minus 3 can equal 0. Add the 3 over. x can equal 3. Then I have an x plus 2 can equal 0. And an x minus 2 can equal 0. Subtract the 2 over, I get x can equal negative 2. This one, x can equal negative 2. <coughs> Those are all my MPDs, right? Once I've saved my MPDs, can I then cancel? Monomial for monomial, binomial for binomial, right? Okay? So, I have some binomials sitting here. I have an X minus 3 in the denominator. Is there an X minus 3 in the numerator? No, that bad boy's staying for life, right? X plus 2 in the denominator. Is there an X plus 2 in the numerator? No, so that's staying for life as well. What about x minus 2 in the denominator? Is there an x minus 2 in the numerator? Yes, so those can cancel. But this x minus 3 and x plus 2, people want to cancel it off and make it better? You can't. It needs to have a twin in the numerator. It does not, so it stays for life. Now let's look at the monomials. Okay, I have a 2. I have a 3. Can anything cancel out of a 2 or a 3? I have x squared and x squared, so I technically have 4 x's in the numerator, correct? And I have 1x in the denominator. So I can cross off 1x for 1x, right? So I can't, like, cancel it off each. Does that make sense? Like, if I have 4x's and I cancel it off each, I'm actually left with x squared. And I only took 1x out of the bottom. That doesn't make sense, right? So I can only take out 1x for 1x. So this x cancels off. I'll make it blue. And it can only cancel off one of these. I can take it off this x squared that's blue or this one that's black. It doesn't matter. But I can only take it off of one of them. I was a rebel and took it off the one that's further away because you probably took it off the closer one because it doesn't matter, but it can only come out of one of them. So there's an x4, x on the bottom. I need to still have three x's left in the top after I cancel one off of the bottom. So now let's say what's left over. So I have a 2x squared times an x, which is 2x cubed, right? And then a 3, x minus 3. X plus 2 staying for life because it's binomials and they don't have twins in the numerator. And then I have to follow behind with X can't equal 0, 3, plus or minus 2. What's next, do you see? What might it say? Your turn. So I want you to do this one and this one. And if you can multiply, tomorrow we do division. If you can multiply, you can divide very easily. Because it's one little step. And then you're multiplying within seconds. Okay? So I want you to do the your turn and the other one, and we're going to go through them in a couple minutes here. Tomorrow we're going to start the class off with review of set theory. Because your test on Thursday has set theory on it, right? And then you're going to go through your test as well tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> the one you just wrote, see how you did, what you didn't make mistakes on.
If we have time, we'll start division. If not, division starts on Wednesday. That's really good. Okay? But that's my plan tomorrow. So that theory gets through the test. If there's time, start division. If not, division starts on Wednesday. Not a big deal. Okay?